It's time. Time to rank every Spirit Halloween 2022 animatronic. All things Halloween. This is Hauntformer and welcome back. Today I have a very daunting duty. I said duty. Today we are going to rank every Spirit Halloween 2022 animatronic. Now I do want to issue a little bit of an apology. Uh, I still stand by my What Happened to Spirit Halloween video that I made of recent. I still think those points are all valid, but I do think my criticisms of this lineup have been a bit harsh from the get-go. And looking back at the year and understanding that there are different reasons for using these items, I have realized that maybe I was a tad too harsh. And seeing the hype at the flagship location, which I unfortunately couldn't attend, but I'm planning to next year, and seeing the in-store experience, the ISC, the laboratory, it looks awesome. Spirit did a great job. And I would say that this lineup, while it's definitely not the best that Spirit Halloween has had to offer, I do not think it's the worst. And with that being said, we are going to start from my least favorite to my favorite Spirit Halloween animatronic for 2022. I'm going to try to put biases aside and really look at these animatronics for what they are. So with that said, let's jump into number 18. Well, before I jump into number 18, let me just say that the lower half of this list is pretty not good. Pretty bad in my opinion. And the upper half I'd say is pretty decent. That's kind of the toss up this year. They're either not really good or very good. I did a tier list live. But now we can jump into these opinions for realsies because it's in a video. Number 18 is Tombstone Terror, which honestly would be bad if it was being sold at CVS. But the fact that it's at Spirit Halloween is just abysmally bad. There's almost nothing redeeming about this in any way, shape, or form. It might be the worst Spirit Halloween animatronic I've ever seen. Uh, it, it's essentially a skull that pops up from behind a tombstone. The skull is incredibly generic, basically the head of one of those Home Depot skeletons, and the tombstone is very simple. It's a little pop-up startle prop, but it looks far too short to get a reaction even out of children. I don't get the appeal of this. It's the worst. It's the worst. At number 17, we have Young Crouchy. You knew he had to be low on the list, this is where he is. Now, here's the thing. If Crouchy didn't exist, Young Crouchy by itself isn't a terrible animatronic. It'd still be pretty low for me, but it's the fact that it's just an exact duplicate of Crouchy just taking away the only thing that made Crouchy interesting, which was its size. I don't get why this exists. I get that it's supposed to be a, a mutated prop for the laboratory, but they should have just made like a Frankenstein animatronic or, or a lab monster or something that's not this. Maybe it's because of the movie and Crouchy is a, a villain from the upcoming Spirit Halloween film. I don't know the reason why this exists, but it shouldn't. And so it lies at number 17. At number 16 is Bag of Bones, which also like Tombstone Terror doesn't feel like a Spirit Halloween animatronic at all. This one seems like it could more or less be at Home Depot or Lowe's perhaps, but Spirit mm, just doesn't really fit. It's a skeleton that pops out of a peanut sack. That's exactly what you get. It has the peekaboo penny jump scare noise. Again, not sure why this exists. From here, we start to get a little bit better, but not by much, although these bottom three are really the bottom of the barrel, and I mean that basically literally. 
At number 15, we have The Rat Girl, which is one of the online-only animatronics for this year. Rat Girl is a young girl who is kind of cooped up on a swing. She swings back and forth, and she has a little rubber rat clenched underneath her hand. Other than that one rat, I really don't know why this is called Rat Girl. Basically, it has nothing to do with rats. It's a girl on a swing. I do like the eyes. I like how the eyes kind of move. She's kind of shifty. But other than that, there's not really a whole lot going on for her. I appreciate that she's in kind of a unique position, kind of, kind of scooted up on the swing seat. But other than that, nothing to really say about this one. At number 14, this might be a shock for some people, we have the Spike Zombie. Now, when I heard about that there was going to be an online zombie, I was super hyped. Zombies are basically my favorite monster, and I was super looking forward to seeing another zombie animatronic. This is not what I was expecting, nor is it what I really wanted. Spike Zombie is a zombie with a spike through him, and he's hanging, and he kind of thrashes about. While the face kind of looks cool, I feel like it's missing some gore, and it basically looks like it was thrown together at the last minute with uh, what basically is just a wiper motor or some, yeah, just a spinning motor inside, kind of making him thrash around. Looks like something you could make yourself with an old t-shirt and a mask. Not really sure why this is at Spirit. It doesn't feel like a Spirit animatronic. And for that reason, it's pretty low. Even though I'm a zombie lover, not even my bias can save Old Spike. At number 13, we have the Possessed Pumpkin. I'm not really sure why so many people have been praising this thing. I really don't get the appeal. Even if you liked farm type, decorations, I feel like there's a lot better fare out there than the Possessed Pumpkin. I must admit, the face and the mold has quite grown on me. I do like the eyes and kind of the gleam of the pumpkin look, but the clothes are very bare. It's a reskin of Crouchy with a pumpkin head, and the voice is just awful. I will say, I do think it's a little bit better having seen it in the stores. I think it is still a little too small for the price they're asking. And that's one thing I can say across the board is the prices this year are still ridiculous. But I'm not sure why this one has received more praise than hate because this is not one that I can put my seal of approval on. At number 12, we have Little Skelly. Now, this is one that I was expecting to put way, way low, just like Young Crouchy. And while it still isn't great, I have to say, and this is very unpopular, that I actually like this one better than the original Little Skelly Bones. I think it's just far more startling than a swinging prop. It at least has kind of a jump scare animation similar to the jumping spider, and I think that could be a reliable scare for people on Halloween night. While I think it still looks a little too cutesy for my taste. I can see why some people might gravitate to getting this. It might scare young children, and for Halloween's sake, that's exactly what it needs to do. At number 11, we have Mr. Punchy. Mr. Punchy is so close to being good for me. It's missing one component, the scare factor. I actually don't think the look of it is terrible. Seeing it in videos of people in person at Flagship, it looks a lot better than the pictures and images I've seen online. And I have to say the concept for this kind of punching bag clown, like one of those old bozos, is a unique idea. However, the execution is lackluster. It kind of moves around in a wobbling motion, and it makes screaming noises, but at no point is it actually startling. I wish it would bounce back and lunge forward, and if it did that, I'd like it a whole lot better. But as it stands, the execution keeps this from being higher on the list. Whoo, we made it. We're in the top 10. And I, I should say some of these lower ones are still not great, great. Like I said, this isn't the best nor the worst year, but it's certainly not on the greater half of history. 
But I will say number 10 is actually one that I I, I don't love, but I understand the, the reason that some people might, and that's Betty Sharp. I think this one works as kind of an uncanny valley situation. It's just so weird looking that it might be appealing for some people. In terms of what they were going for, I think it missed the mark of having this creepy little girl that killed someone. Because let's face it, she's completely static. And the bag that rides around barely does so. I feel like most people would miss it. And the price is factoring that motor in where it really doesn't need to be there at all. It just could be a static. I think if they took this idea to the nth degree, make uncanny animatronic animatronics. I think that would be really impressive to see at Spirit Halloween. Something between a mannequin and like a Chuck E. Cheese type robot would be very cool to see. As it stands, I can't say Betty Sharp is necessarily terrible, but I can't say that she's really that good either. At number 9, we have Lucky Bottoms, which I wish I could like more, because I really do like the way it looks. My issue with Lucky Bottoms is that it's a groundbreaker clown, which I can't rationalize how that would work. Some people have said it's a clown coming out of a cannon, and that could make sense if it came with a cannon. I'd even be fine with saying that it was a half-bodied clown if it had blood at the bottom or perhaps a pair of extra legs you could put to accompany it with your display. But the fact that it's just a half-body clown, no blood, really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I think it looks cool. I feel like the laugh would get a little bit annoying, but it is a clown, so I guess that's understandable. Certainly not the worst I've seen of clowns, but certainly not the best. Number eight is the sleeper hit of the year. I, I wouldn't say hit, but not a fail. In my tier list, I put this at an F, and now that is certainly not the case. This was a weird one for me to put this high on this list. The Deadly Creeper Spider. When I heard that this spider was $200, I laughed and immediately put it at an F. It looked just like a generic spider, and it basically is except for the fact that it's ginormously huge. And for that reason, it went up in my book. Giant bugs and critters has always been a theme of mine that has interested me. And seeing this big spider in person, I bet would be really sweet. I do not know why this wasn't in stores because it would really raise sales. I do think that the design of it could be a bit better to look more realistic, maybe with some different colors as opposed to that black all over scheme, but it's certainly not an F, certainly not an A, but I think number eight of the year is telling. At number seven, we have Nozzles the Clown. Now, I have said basically all I could say about clown animatronics and how I feel like they're overused and we should get a break from them. However, Nozzles the Clown is a unique concept. And the execution is actually not too bad. Unlike my problems with some of the other ones on the lists, the animatronic here does utilize the gimmick. It moves its arms and shoots smoke, toxic gas, whatever you want to call it, out of those nozzles with the lights. It actually looks pretty cool. Color scheme on it is nice. I actually really like the face especially seeing it in person. The in-person look is a lot better to me than how it looks in the online images of this decoration. I don't think it's the best of the year, and 350 is still very, very steep. I think 250 max for this guy. But in terms of clowns, you could go a whole lot worse. I think this is one of the more unique designs of clowns, and I think number seven is a great spot for it on my list. At number six, we have Monty. Monty is an animatronic I actually wanted to put higher on the list, but there were a few others that I think deserved it a bit more. Monty is this giant symbol banging monkey, and the design of it is really quite creepy. I actually really like the design, and I like basically the execution, except it's a bit too slow, and I think had the speed of it been a little faster and the, the audio been a little bit higher pitched, it would have gone higher up on the list, but because it's just a little too slow to be startling, it takes it down a tad. I used to own a little Jolly Chimp, the little symbol monkey, 
and they're quite fast and they eke a very loud screech. I think that would have been really cool to see in a giant animatronic, but as they were going for this kind of bigger ape look, I think Monty isn't too bad. And here we go, the top five. At number five, we have the Widow or the Neckbreaker Woman. I think when everyone saw this in the little teaser videos, we all got really excited. And the payoff is pretty good. I wanted to place this higher on the list, actually, but what's keeping me from doing that is that the Widow is just too static, aside from its one movement. It breaks its neck, and while that is a very jarring and creepy movement, I wish it did something else. Maybe just a side-to-side -side like Miss Mercy to show off that broken neck. Not that this is bad in any way, but it just seems a little too static with its one movement. Now, I do think with the right lighting and situation, you could make it a whole lot better. I think the sculpt is fantastic, and if you could draw attention to the head and the neck, you'd be doing it a big, big favor. I really do like it. Not sure if I'll get it. I wish it was in person, in stores. I heard it's a filler, so maybe we will see it. But at any rate, number five is where the Widow shall remain. At number four, we have the Straw Man. Straw Man has been basically the fan favorite of the year, and I can't necessarily blame people. I like scarecrows that shut their trap, have stitching over their mouth, and just rely on the creepy movement of an alive scarecrow that's far more creepy to me than one that talks about the dead farmer and the whatever that this thing talks about. But I will say this might be the best scarecrow animatronic that we've seen to date. I really do like the flow of the movement, all thanks to the servos. I think servo animatronics are here to stay at this point with Grimm and this guy. Straw Man is definitely very creepy, and I like him a lot more when I saw the videos of people who purchased him from Flagship. So, he's great. I don't know why he's not in the stores this year. Doesn't make sense. I know he's a filler, but he should have been a mainstay, especially when props like Tombstone Terror and Young Crouchy are in the themes. Really, we should have had some of these other ones on the, on the themes, too. Really, we should have had some of these other options in the themes as well. At number three, we have Reagan McNeil from The Exorcist. You knew that she was going to be high up on this list. The Exorcist is my favorite movie of all time. And I love little Reagan here. I think the design of her is really what stands out to me. As a collector, someone that's going to put Reagan in my room to show off with all my horror memorabilia. Her sculpt is fantastic, and I love the way she looks. I do think the animation is a little lackluster, for the whopping price of $280. With a coupon, I'm willing to spend it because I'm a big fan of the movie, but I can see why people who haven't seen the movie or don't love the movie, which I don't know why you don't love the movie, but whatever, wouldn't gravitate to picking this up. Some people have complained for the lack of mouth movement. I'm actually okay with that. It's in service of the sculpt, but I do wish that the price would reflect the one animation gimmick of this girl. I also do love the Pazuzu that reflects and shines out of her back. I think that's a nice way to wrap up the animatronic, and it comes in at number three. At number two, we have Lord Raven. Not one I expected to put in my top five, not to mention number two out of the year. But I can't help it. I think it's just such a good execution for what is a very weird concept. A skeletal raven monster that kind of lurches, I guess would be the right way to describe the motion. You can do the Lord Raven dance. I do like it. I, I have to admit, and I don't usually favor these types of animatronics, but when something works, it just works. 
I think this animation should be used again. It'll probably get used for a clown, but I would encourage Spirit to attempt a giant alien leader of some kind. Probably won't happen. But we can hope. I do like the animation quite a bit, and the voice is actually pretty darn creepy and scratchy. But of course, there's only one more animatronic left. You know it had to come in at number one, and that is... Bog Zombie. The zombie is back, and if the smoldering zombie did it for burnt zombies, then the bog zombie does it for the aquatic zombies. What can I say? I'm a simple man. I see zombie, I want zombie. Now, I will say, I, I have proven that my bias isn't that extreme because Spike is way down on the list. You can't just make some generic zombie. Same goes with the clowns. And I will uh, attest to the fact that years ago, zombies were like the clowns, overused and overdone because of The Walking Dead, and now because of, like, It and... Pennywise, we've seen a whole bunch of clowns. Who knows what the next big monster will be. But this is such a simple animatronic that could be used really for so much. I'm even doing a morgue type of display in my haunt this year. And I think, I think this could still work in that. Because it's just a corpse covered in this moss type stuff. The details in the face and all across the body are spot on. The really kind of janky animation is top notch and the audio fits also well. Bog Zombie is a great example of an animatronic done right and I can't wait to pick them up for the 2022 season. Do you agree with my list? Do you not agree? Are you mad that I put Tombstone Terror at number 18? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you at Spirit Halloween for 2022. Remember, for all things Halloween, this is Hauntformer.